Kyan Cruz, lovely to see you live from LA. Welcome back to 5FM. We've been spinning end and dangerous for months now, it seems. We've been so excited for the new EP, and now it's finally dropped. It dropped fully last Friday. We got to experience it in all of its uh, glory. How's the weekend been? How's the response been? How are you feeling? Wow, honestly, it's been pretty insane. I had a release party, and honestly, based off of that, I kind of saw how people were responding to it and the response was so amazing. And honestly, moving to LA just before the pandemic hit, I was so surprised at how many people even showed up just to, you know, support. So it's been, it's been great. And it must be a wild thing because you've been working on this for such a long time. The nerves, the worries, how will it feel? Will people like it? Will I like it once it's in the public eye? You must feel so relieved. I'm so glad that it's out. I've been sitting with these songs for two years maybe even more some of them so i'm just glad that it's out and people like it and i'll talk my hands in my chest and i can focus on the next thing it's amazing so it's called demos for ransom but before then i just want to let the listeners know kai and cruz burst into i think national attention a handful of years ago uh, with a single with sketchy bongo called love me in the dark that went number one literally yes. everywhere i was on the radio in cape town when that came out such an incredible thing and then you did a hugely wild and brave thing as you said to move to los angeles you didn't know that there was about to be a once in a hundred years global pandemic but as a young right. artist starting out early in your career to make that huge huge risk of that switch that often people further much further down their career lines never do what was the rationale behind that and how has it turned out was it the way you expected wow it's it has been nothing that i expected it to be but um it's been the best thing that it could have been i've learned so much honestly just being away from home during a time like this has taught me so much i've grown so much i've had to be very independent and just figure a lot of things out on my own but now that I've gotten through it, honestly, I wouldn't go back and change anything. So, you know, it's been it's been kind of crazy, but we're still here. And I'm just glad that I can, you know, be here and make all these connections on this side and just keep expanding and just go global with it. And what's it like uh, moving into a brand new music scene when it's not even your hometown or your own people? That must be so wild. Oh yeah, it's, it's everything. Like when I first got here, the culture shock was wild. Like just everything is different. Obviously I come from a small town, like Peter Marisburg is where I grew up. So coming here into the big crazy city where it never sleeps, there's just crazy things going on 24 seven. It was a lot at first, but once I kind of found my groove and the right people, and just kept connecting with people and just finding real people as well. Cause obviously it's a known thing that this side of the industry can be a lot of like fake things that go on and a lot of like, you know, situations that you have to be aware of and avoid. But I'm just glad that I've managed to navigate that and just find the right people. Amazing. And what's the music scene like in LA in your, I guess, spaces you've carved it? Because you're doing like a really, I think, incredible world style and world level style of like new age R&B meets a little bit of soul, meets a little bit of like lyric reflectivity and storytelling, <laughs> which is one part of a massive music scene in LA. Honestly, it's been insane and inspiring. Just the level of work, work ethic on this side is crazy. Like the competition is also so much crazier and stronger just knowing that you have to step it up because that's really what it is you just have to see what's going on around you and know that you're competing with the big dogs now so you have to really step everything up and just make sure that <clears throat> what you're doing is quality but just being in the scene on this side is so like eye-opening and just seeing how these people work and how they do studio sessions and how they navigate everything is just so interesting and I've just been learning, honestly. Incredible. So let's talk about Demos for Ransom. I actually listened to it twice today again uh, to prep for this interview. I found it really interesting because I don't know if you had one muse for this uh, demo or, uh, or at least for this EP or if you had many different relationships or romantic dalliances that you were calling on or if it was even just fictional. Mm -hmm. But it really felt like you were moving through different stages of the struggle and challenge of getting into a new relationship with somebody who's uncertain or to a certain right. degree uh, emotionally immature with their feelings and so 
a lot right. of these songs felt like you cycling through the frustration and then the hope and then the disappointment of trying to love somebody who just wasn't ready for it. And I found that to be really refreshing because each song on their own stood for that, for, for that different part of that experience. But then together as a whole, I felt like I was going through the relationship with you as the EP unfolded. Was that a conscious decision? I mean, most of my music is subconscious on a level to like when I write songs, it's just therapy for me. That's how it starts. I don't go in with a specific goal in mind or a specific like I'm going to make this or I'm going to try to do this with this song. I kind of just let it come out and then decipher through it. You know, a lot of things come out when you're just letting all your emotions come out onto the table and then just figuring out a storyline and Honestly, I wrote all those songs at a time where I was so frustrated, just personally in the industry. I was at a weird age as well. I was probably like 21 at the time, which is a weird age, like going, growing up and kind of going into adulthood where you're kind of perceived as an adult, but you still feel like a child. So it's like, how do I navigate this? There's so many things going on. I have to learn how to like pay bills now, but like, I'm still like emotionally growing so how do I you know go through all these different and also relationships in the world like navigating people and just emotionally growing and just getting to that maturity level can be very frustrating so that's kind of how it came about but honestly demos for ransom the title it wasn't supposed to be that I was in a call it um I don't even remember it was something else but what had happened was so I moved out to LA right I was working on these songs with these two producers that I moved out here with. And it was amazing. We made all the songs. At the end of it, they handed me a contract that was wild, like five-year contract, no money, like 360. Wow. It almost was like a production deal, but it didn't make sense. So I was like, okay, I'm not gonna sign this. But like my first reaction was, oh, let's like meet up with lawyers and like meet halfway, like figure sure. it out. We'll be we'll be cool. They got back to me and were like, no, we don't really want to do this anymore and all that. And I was like, wow. okay, cool, I guess. And they just ghosted me, like disappeared off the face of the earth. And I was like, wait, what am I going to do with these songs? Like, what is going to happen? And then I was just sitting with the songs. And one day my lawyer was like, well, I think you should just release them. Wow. And I was like, wait, how? Like they not mix or mastered. That's why they call, it's called demos for ransom because all of them are still demos. Sure. Um, so he was like, no, don't worry. Like just release it through DistroKid. Cause that's like an online platform where there's no, um, like label or any type of money involved. And he was just like, put it out through there. There's no way they can do anything about it. If you do it that way. And I just took the risk. I was like, okay, whatever, let's just do it. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Hectic. And so that's how it got released. And I'm just glad that it's out and. Because I've also spoken to a lot of artists in the industry, and this happens to so many people. Really? So many times, like um, an artist will go in and write something, or even pr production side, you go in and you put in your work, and then some big dog on the top end of the scale tries to either like trap you with it, or like sure. make you pay a, a big sum of money for it, or they like just kind of like abuse the the naive artists in the world that are coming up that don't really know the back end and the contracts and the things to avoid. So knowing that that happened to a lot of people, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fall victim to this. I'm gonna figure it out and just get the music out. And hopefully I can inspire other artists to do the same and not, you know, get scared away by the threats and the, oh, I'm gonna sue you and all these things because at the end of the day, it's your intellectual property and you should be able sure. to do it, what you want with it, so. What an outrageously difficult thing, because I mean, for them to wait for you to pour your heart, soul and then artistic creativity into some music, fall in love with it, have it be your baby and then be excited about what it can become in the world and then to slap you with something like that sounds devastating. Right. Yeah, it was it was a lot to go through, but I'm just glad that I was able to figure it out and, you know, build a whole concept around it and just kind of bring awareness to the fact that that is something that happens in the industry a lot yeah. of the time. So I think it all worked out. Yeah, well, look, it sounds fantastic. So those producers have probably, I'll have to leave that part out. Yeah. <laughs> no, definitely. I think they have some regrets, but you know, I think everything happens for a reason and happens sure. the way it's supposed to. So I wouldn't change it. 
Sure. And listen, it sounds great. And we're so excited to play out all these records. I've got a lot of time for rumor. I'm telling you, it just, it's got that beat in it and that energy, which makes it danceable, but a story is still being told. I'm very, very stoked about it. I appreciate it. Yes. No worries. So uh, what happens now for you? Because now that you finally got this kind of like artistic project out, fought through all of the creative and the legal mess of it, tried to figure out what to do with it and then come to some kind of resolution. What's next for Kyan? <clears throat> well, right now I'm just, so I'm still an independent artist. I have not signed to any distribution or label. Um, so everything is just in-house. I found a team that I work with now that like we work very closely together and we just it's almost like a family structure so we're just you know continuing to build the brand and find new opportunities and just networking with people but the next project i've already started working on it so i'm excited for that one for sure and what it's going to turn out to be because i feel like i always have an idea in the beginning but it always ends up being something totally different so i'm just excited to see what that turns into but just always working on new music um just keep you know, keeping the building going and just doing the thing. Absolutely. And it sounds like, I mean, it's crazy because you started talking about how difficult it was to move to another country. Then you talked about how difficult it is to be in your early 20s, being treated like an adult, feeling like you're still growing. Then you talked about handling being screwed by the music industry. It sounds like you've been through so much. What a growing process. I can only imagine that you're finding a new version of yourself and expressing it through the music that you're making it now, having been through so much. Oh yes, of course. Like, obviously, I'm I'm just getting older and more mature as a person, but also all these experiences are making me age a lot quicker, just okay. mentally. So that's always going to show creatively in the music and the visuals and the ideas that come next. So it's going to be interesting to see what the next thing turns into because, like you said, there's been a lot that's been going on. So. Absolutely. And listen, I mean, I, th I think you were in South Africa quite recently, weren't you? You were visiting. Yes. Yeah, so I made a little trip. I snuck in real quick. I didn't let too many people know because it was mostly for family. Sure. I hadn't seen them in a long time since before the pandemic. So I snuck back in, but it was such a mission getting back to LA, like the whole yeah. COVID regulations. Like we got stuck in Germany for two days. Wow. Like, unexpectedly. Okay. I got stuck in Germany and they were basically telling me that the only way they were going to let me back in was if I had like this specific form that said that I was like a national interest of like the US and they okay. <laughs> were giving, making me like an exception to be let back in. So I'm there like emailing, like my team is emailing as many people, phoning as many people as we can, trying to like figure out how to get this piece of paper that we had no idea about until yeah. we got there. Yeah. Like we were, I was in a line to board the plane. And as I get there, they're like, um, do you have this like piece of paper? And oh. I'm like, what? <laughs> no, <laughs> so we figured it out. Um, so luckily we figured it out and they gave us what we needed and I got back in, but wow, was that a mission? Mm. I'm not like no pressure and I'm sure it won't be that, but I'm just saying like calling your next creative work national interest would be a badass title. <laughs> well, potentially. There's a, there's a lot of things going on that could be a great storyline. So I might include all of it into one. <laughs> you never know. No, that'd be excellent. Well, Kain, I think that you're just making fantastic music and I'm so delighted that a South African has been brave enough and justified in being brave enough to go and put their talents out in front of the whole world. Uh, we're so happy to play your music on the radio whenever you put it out and we're so glad that Dem uh, Demo Saransom is out in the world now and we're very excited to play Gemini and then Rumor and all of the rest of them to add to Weekend and Dangerous. Thank you so much for your time. Yes, of course. Thank you for having me and showing support and love from day one. So I appreciate that and yeah. I'm, I'm just ready for the world to hear it, so run it up. <laughs> <laughs>